Yo, what up guys, what's happening? Welcome back again. Uh, we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna hop right back into it. And today we're gonna start getting this motor manual compatible. Um, so we're gonna go over some of the small details that I mentioned in the last video. Um, but without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so on the automatic motor, you can see how this sensor goes down and like this is how it is. It has like a screw, right, and then like the whole thing kind of pops off. On the manual, it's a little different see it's like a plug right there so all right and then another thing look at this is a I guess it's called a reluctor wheel look at how many teeth are back here look at how close they are and then on the automatic look at those look how big that gap is right there Right, and then the manuals. There's a there's a bunch more teeth back here. Right, and then obviously the sensor's different, and this little plug itself is different. See, this one is let's say more of a rectangle that has three pins, and this one right here is like a square, right? and it only has the two pins. We're gonna have to switch out the wheel and the sensor. And then, then we're gonna come up, take the cam gear off, and we're gonna take this whole aluminum plate. Uh, sorry, it's this whole plate right here. Cause if you could see in there, the sensors are kinda integrated into the plate itself. So, uh, I just wanted to show you guys the reluctor wheel and the sensor on the motor before I started pulling this stuff off. There it is. Now, just gotta see if it's gonna fit. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. That's it, and then I'll put the tin back in right there. But before that, I'm gonna pull off this reluctor wheel. Okay, so I got that one off. You can see them side by side. This is the manual one right, oh shit, <laughs> right there. This is the automatic. Obviously, the sensor is counting these teeth. So, if we're gonna change the sensor for the plug, we're gonna change the reluctor wheel as well. We're gonna be putting this one with the more teeth over here onto the automatic. This is what we're going to switch. Keep these bolts here. Behind that plate, there's this sensor here. Over here, it is 
a plug. So I'm gonna have to pull this plug and replace it with this sensor here. And then, then we're gonna swap the plates over. Okay. Okay, there's no way I was getting that plug out. So I just put this in to use as a plug. Okay, so it's a couple days later. And as you can see, I got everything back apart. Um, I just had this, this gut feeling that something wasn't right with how the plate and the cam gear got installed. For one, a couple of times during installation, um, and I know a zip tie is not, not the right way, but I just had the um, idea that there wasn't a good enough gap between these little lobes and uh, the sensor right and uh, I was right and that's because if you look back here it's not letting the plate set flush the automatic one sits flush and I'm gonna show you why On the automatic plate, the mounting screw for this sensor is right off to the right. On the manual, the mounting screw for the sensor is right above the sensor. Okay, so what's happening is, when you go to put the sensor on, or the plate, it's hitting right here. Because on the automatic, the mounting screw's on the right hand side, it goes over in this area but on the manual head there's a small little indentation from the factory right here so basically you have to grind a little spot this big the guy on the forums was correct you got to grind it right where the head's hitting you have to grind that little spot in the head so the plate will fit the cam gears okay the automatic look at how skinny these lobes are the manuals they're a bit thicker make sure you run the manual cam gear see when you go to install your plate if you don't grind that part down on the head Look, you can tell, and that's why I was getting that feeling that it wasn't sitting flush and I couldn't see any differences until I noticed that the screw goes on top on the manual plate. So don't overlook that or you're gonna end up damaging these sensors and shit, who knows what you could do with your motor. ended up grinding a little bit right here to make some room for the sensor I know I was having just a bit of clearance issues right here and I did notice on the automatic look there's this little wall right here right next to that nub there's that wall if you look at the manual well firstly you can see that from the factory this is nice and flat like I just made the other one see on the manual motor that wall is missing it's all flat to make room for that sensor that sticks out the side right here because on the automatic the sensor just goes right inside underneath
So it looks like that was it. I ended up grinding this nub out right here, taking this wall down a little bit to make room for that sensor. And I did a little bit right here to make room for the left hand sensor. It all sits flush now, as you see. Um, so yeah, don't forget those steps uh, to make sure you're gonna, this is make, gonna make sure everything sits flush so you have room for your sensors in between the sensor and the cam gear. So we got the plate we need, the back of the plate for the cam gear. Okay, so we're just gonna put this on. Okay, that's it. We got the timing belt on. Everything's good and tight. We just need to put the covers on, put the crank pulley back on, and then the side of the motor is gonna be done. The manual swap components on the motor itself. You know, other than the obvious, the clutch. Um, like I said, these are the things that no one mentions for this swap is this, these sensors and plugs right here, and then this reluctor wheel with this sensor down here. Okay, those are two of the main differences. As for converting the motor itself over to manual, that's pretty much, you know, that's all that's involved if you're gonna be using the manual harness. Oh.